Hello and welcome to Camera Review. Today we are looking at these beautiful images of the new Tamron 24 to 70 millimeter G2. This is the new version lens that is just about to be announced or is going to come out into the market and it's going to make a quite an impact because Sigma had just recently released their 24 to 70 millimeter which has optical stabilization. This lens will also feature optical stabilization which they call VC. And that is going to make a big dent in the market as far as the way things are aligned. Because as you may remember, the Canon lens, which was been in the market for quite some time, the 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 version 2, it sold for $1,700. And that's considering the new drop in price before it was $1,900 US. And that was a lot of money to pay. Now we having these new lenses and these new lenses are much affordably priced. The previous version of the Tamron was $1,300. We expecting this new lens to be priced around that price range to be competitive to Canon and more importantly, to be more competitive with Nikon because Nikon on that respect has some of the most expensive lenses in the market with prices at $2,400. Now they have um, VR, they have a very good optics, but when you compare this lens versus Sigma and the new Tamron that's coming out, there's going to be almost a thousand dollar difference. And how do you justify a thousand dollar difference when you afford these quality differences, when you could put everything that you ever wanted in a quality lens in a cheaper package and cheaper meaning more affordable it does not mean lower quality before it used to be lower quality now we got the vr we got the optics we got the design and when you look at the optics and the design you can see very clearly the nikon had 20 elements in 16 groups it had nine aperture blades and it weighed about a thousand 70 grams which is 2.35 pounds now we're looking at this new lens that's from sigma and it has a very strong characteristic it has the same kind of quality it has the same kind of sharpness and it has a very solid construction and when you look at the elements it's 19 elements in 14 groups in with, with nine aperture blades so what it means is that the nikon and sigma have pretty much equal in terms of optical design. Their quality, their distortion is being virtually eliminated from uh, having effects on, for example, the chromatic aberration, the coatings have gone up. So what we are seeing currently is this new trend in the market of very competitive lenses. It's so much so that you can't really tell difference in terms of sharpness. What you can say though, is the color rendition is the way that the, the lens operates and it feels three four years ago when i was using sigma it had issues especially with the focus style it had issues with adjusting the uh the zoom ranges from going 24 to 70 you you kind of felt it was not dampened now these lenses have dampening it has much better operation smoother silky turns now before this was not the case especially on the tamron range but now looking at the 70 200 millimeter they release as the second generation that is much better operated it's a little stiffer than for example the what nikon has and it has issues like uh, focus breathing and all the other things that are inherent even in the most expensive light lenses from Nikon. The only one that has been able to eliminate this kind of issue so much so is the Canon lineup. Again, we're looking at the, the, the Tamrons and seeing that they have improved in quality, improved in design, improved in sharpness and the optical coatings. So what is happening is they're bringing out something into the market saying this is my competitive element. This is what I'm bringing forward and the quality is spectacular. When I see it, I say, okay, they have put some thought into manufacturing this, into designing this and the quality speaks for itself. And you can see how much difference there is in terms of the look and design. 
the ni- the older version looked like it was something of a 1990s era of like lens design and then now you're looking at this new design it is so much more streamlined so much more better design and also the ultrasonic silent drive which was in the uh, the first version of uh, Tamron 24 to 70 millimeters is being continued on to the new generation and that is going to match the quality and the speed of autofocus that was found on Nikon. Nikon has incredibly good autofocus. This is going to match it and more importantly Canon which has been the dominant player in the market when it comes to autofocus is going to get a run for its money because Although they are much better priced, they do not have optical stabilization. The 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 second version from Canon has been in the market for quite some time and it is not able to compete. It's not able to compete because the price is too high, it does not have stabilization, and more importantly, it does not have all the elements that have been going into these newer lenses especially when you look at the design it has 18 elements in 13 groups now the design is going higher and higher with more elements more groupings and the quality has been just phenomenal with the new lenses especially the sigmas and tamrons and i think they're gonna be taking more share of the market and that's going to make the the market more solid more firmly grounded the pricing gonna be better because before remember it was the canon and nikon that was ruling the market they were the ones who dictated the price and the quality and all the other third party manufacturers whether it was sigma tamron or any other ones they had to kind of settle for the prices and had to lower the quality or lower their uh, their price in order to compete now they come up with quality matching the nikons or the canons and their prices are still way lower than these two market leaders think about it you're going to spend twenty four hundred dollars versus thirteen hundred dollars you're saving nine hundred dollars what that means is that when you are going to sell your lens in the next uh, three to five years you're not going to lose as much and in fact People will buy this lens more and it will become a valuable lens and people will cherish it and have their in their arsenal. This is the reason companies like Zeiss had been producing their planars and sonars for 20-25 years without altering it because the quality was there. They didn't have to redesign the lens and they didn't have to put new coatings. They didn't have to design lenses around the idea of improvement. They had to design their lenses on how much further can we take our lenses technologically in the same way Tamron is doing it in this in this fashion seeing how much better could they get their lenses in terms of sharpness and when you look at the MTF charts this is something extremely important you're going to see the sharpness now a lot of people judge lenses solely on the sharpness sharpness is only one of the factors you got to look at distortion and some of the distortion can be corrected in Lightroom, but you got chromatic aberration. The, that is something that needs to be addressed. Now, these coatings, these new lens designs is removing much of that chromatic aberration, but still, you will see some chromatic aberration, and that is the one that needs to be reduced. That is the one that needs to be concentrated upon. And more importantly, color rendition. Look at the colors from a Zeiss lens. You will see it has beautiful colors, it has beautiful contrast, and that is what made Zeiss lenses so so successful. In the same way Leica has been so successful, but you look at the Tamron, it's at the lower end, the 24 millimeter range to to 28 millimeter range. You're going to see when you open the lens up to like uh, f 2.8, you're going to have a little bit less contrast, a little bit less color renditioning and that is to be expected because what happens is these lenses they are not as efficient as some of the better design lenses of the past so what i'm saying by that is if you look at the lens designs that were coming out in the 60s 70s 80s that was a know-how that people build up on and the companies that had the lead built very good lenses so what i'm saying is if you look at the the sony lenses 24 to 70 
and that was built by Zeiss, you're going to see that they have a very good quality and the contrast is there, the color rendition is there. Now, Tamron has been catching up, they've been catching up and now when I look at their quality, it's much better than what it used to be. Again, if you want to get the best quality from this lens, you need to dial up the lens to f5.6 or f8, and that's going to give you the optimum quality. But anything above f2.8, which is wide open, if you go to f4, f5.6, you are going to get amazing images. And what makes this lens different than the Sigma and the Nikon is how it captures the bokeh. If you are shooting in daytime, you're going to have this beautiful uh, kind of smooth renditioning of the out of focus area and that's something i truly appreciate the problem has been as i mentioned in my other view, review of the 70 to 200 millimeters the the aperture blades the way it's designed it gives this cat eye look and what is the problem with that is it does not look natural in a photograph if you see cat eyes it was a design issue that had been plaguing uh, producers of lenses for decades in the 60s and 70s and that was something they tried to get away with and they put five six aperture blades and they, they saw that it didn't work so now all the lenses today are almost eight or nine or even more aperture blades you look at cinema lenses it's got 14 aperture blades the reason is they want to create that roundish bokeh in the in the out of focus areas where the, there is light or light emission so this is something that is a been a problem so taking the 70 to 200 millimeters as a reference we are hoping that the 24 to 70 millimeters is not going to have that issue i've seen some of the photographs i've taken some of the photographs and those photographs are giving me that sign that there is some cat eyes and cat eyes is something that i don't appreciate and does not look good beyond that if you are just going to use it daytime if you're not going to have anything in the background that has lights then this this lens will work perfectly if you're going to do nature photography or you're going to do outdoor wedding photography no problem because why but you don't have any lights in the background you just have a smooth transition and the transition is good the sharpness is good if the wedding grime and bride and groom look at these photos they go wow it looks beautiful they're not going to say oh you didn't shoot with an icon you didn't shoot with a sigma because what happens is the quality is there and in fact the quality of the tamron in terms of sharpness it pretty much matches sigma and can compete easily with nikon and canon in fact they perform better but the question is how much are you going to pay for that quality are you going to pay the $2,400 even though you know that Nikon is not as sharp are you going to pay the price of a Canon and pay five six hundred dollars more just because it's a Canon now considering this being that both lenses are in very well well built condition if they are well built and they perform well then that's all you need and that's what's important some people have wrote to me and asked me what do you think of the sigma would you choose a sigma over tamron well the sigma is been doing phenomenal they you looked at those charts you probably examined their art series you looked at the dxo mark which is not accurate in some respects but if you look at those numbers and you see what there has been in the test results and i've tested almost all sigma lenses their prime lenses their art lenses and I've seen the quality. I mean, the sharpness is there. The rendition is there. I mean, except the 50 millimeter art series uh, lens, the f1.4, that is got horrible bokeh. But hey, if you look at the 24, 35, they look amazing. And the only thing that they have as competition is the Zeiss lenses because you look at the Nikons, Nikons have not been competitive in the 50 millimeter range or the 35 millimeter range. They are very good if you're going to pick up the 14 to 24 millimeter lens. So this is what I'm trying to say. The Sigmas are the leaders and Sigma is my preferred lens right now because of the rendition of bokeh and the sharpness. And I like their design. And in fact, they have the optical civilization. So I don't know how much better Tamron can do between their $1,300 price, which Sigma is selling for, and then the Tamron, which is trying to sell it at the same price. If I had the choice between the two, 
I still will go with the Sigma because Sigma has a much better reputation and it has improved in quality. Now, we are just seeing the Tamron come out with the news lenses and they're saying their design is better and their conditions is better and their mechanics are better. But yet we have to see it. We got to see it for a year, year and a half, two years, see how these lenses are performing and if they are having mechanical issues. So that is something to be tested. So would you want to risk that? That's the reason why the professionals still buy the Canons and Nikons and pay the extra because they don't want to have an issue when they go out in the field. If you're going to shoot in Magno, uh, uh, you know, you're going to go to India or uh, Mongolia or, or, or some place that's far out in the desert, you're not going to have a Canon service, you know, right there. You're not going to have a Sigma service. So you want to make sure that your lens performs under those difficult conditions. And it is one of the reasons that uh, these lenses, all of them coming from all different manufacturers, have weather sealing. Weather sealing is key issue. If you're going to go out, you don't want to have dust seeping in, moisture seeping in. I have had to send my camera back because one of the lenses had failed it failed in the moisture area it had it had issues so this is something that i didn't like but i couldn't do anything about it because it didn't have proper sealing similarly cameras even though they're weather sealed they have to be protected and you cannot leave the landscape open or you cannot leave uh, your camera on a, a exposed under the sun if you are going to use your camera for a long period of time it is for this reason when i look at the sigma i say okay sigma has done it right they've done the, their research they have they put their uh aspherical elements they look at they put their uh composite material to make this lens exceptionally good they have the hypersonic af motor so that's good so it's all there and what i like about it is that the sigma has the four aspherical elements so super low dispersion elements they have three of them so optically when i look at the numbers and the way it's designed i see sigma is superior now tamron well we're gonna see what tamron does tamron it has a super silent drive motor which is very good it's gonna focus just as fast it has moisture and resistant construction which is good but i still don't like the way that aperture turns so for me the best money you can spend is a sigma and i know because of this competition canon has to come out the version 3 which is a 24 to 70 millimeter lens uh, and that's going to probably have uh, vr which is the uh, vibration reduction and that's going to make this Canon still be competitive. But again, their prices are going to be higher than the Sigmas and Tamrons. So my, my suggestion to you, if you're going to buy lenses, look at Sigma, okay, and see what the Tamron has in the next couple of weeks uh, to two months. See the images that come out. But do remember, look for those signs. Does it have cat eyes? Does it have issues when the, in the low light? Does it have issues in the bokeh area if it does have issues and it bothers you that's not the lens for you because if you're gonna if you're a professional you don't want to have that issue if you are an artistic person who wants to have great images you cannot have cat eyes in the background unless that's intentional so for that reason sigma is good nikon is still good canon is still good considering that you know optical value of those lenses now, I hope you have enjoyed this review. Please do subscribe to our channel. Look at our uh, information down below for if you want to purchase these lenses. I provided the links to get the best prices on these lenses. And more importantly, visit our website at camerareview.ca. That's Canadian CA. We are independent reviewers, so we are not getting paid by Tamron or Sigma or anybody else. We are the ones who buy the lenses and do the reviews. So for that, we try to keep as honest, as uh, clear and objective in our reviews. And for that, I hope you support us by uh, subscribing to our channel and maybe helping us on the Patreon. And I thank you for listening and watching.